Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I have been a family systems therapist for 31 years. During that time, I have worked with hundreds of troubled couples. Um, some couples included parents and children, siblings, uh, parents and, and their own parents, people whose relationships were highly stressed, a major percentage of the committed couples that I've worked with have either been divorced or are divorcing psychologically or even legally. I myself have been divorced. So I know this from inside the trenches. Across the years that I have done this work and tried to understand human nature and how we all work, I have reached a point where I believe now there are five specific reasons that primary relationships, at least in our culture, probably in others, don't work, don't work well or don't work at all and ultimately fail. I've never seen anybody propose these five reasons. Um, that either may be I've seen, I see something that no one else does or I am distorting reality. I leave that for you to judge. These are the five reasons that combine, in my opinion, to cause many or most relationships to be highly stressed and many marriages, at least in America, to fail. The first and least well known is that one or both partners have significant psychological wounds because they did not get nurtured well as very young children. These wounds are invisible, they're not widely known, the public is ignorant of them and in denial of them. I bet you can't name them. The wounds are these, briefly. Excessive shame, excessive guilt. I lump those together, though they are separate, They're separate in origin. Problems trusting, trust too much or trust too little. Excessive fear, anxiety, worry, fear of many things. Excessive reality distortion. That can be like idealizing, intellectualizing, denying, minimizing. Lots of ways we distort reality. Fuzzy thinking. These are primary psychological wounds that a high percentage of at least Americans, American adults, have. They have learned long ago to adapt to these wounds. They often don't know they have them. They don't know what they mean and they don't know what to do about them. One thing these wounds mean is we wounded people, for I am one, unconsciously seek and choose other wounded people for partners. That includes business associates and friends. What happens when two wounded people get together? Stay tuned. The second of five reasons that many relationships fail is ignorance. Our ancestors and our society does not teach us fundamental information that we need about psychological wounds, effective communication, healthy grief, how to spot unfinished grief, and why we should even pay attention to it, how to build a pro-grief family, how to choose and maintain psychologically and holistically healthy relationships, how to co-evolve a high nurturance family where everybody gets their needs met well enough, often enough. And most of all, our society and our ancestors have been unsuccessful in teaching most adults how to be effective parents. Effective parents do not grow wounded children. So, reason number one for rape relationship breakups as a high percentage of people don't know they're psychologically wounded, <clears throat> they also have a great deal of unawareness slash ignorance of the topics I just outlined. Many of these people, because of these first two reasons, 
have unfinished grief that causes physiological and psychological problems and it stresses relationships in ways that most people don't understand. It's a third reason that is not well known, not publicized, not discussed, not taught. You put these three reasons together and that creates the fourth reason for our high divorce rate, psychological legal divorce rate. That is, mates who are attracted to each other and who are needy for companionship and intimacy, stimulation, and to be normal, socially normal. People who are, have those motivators choose other wounded, unaware people who may have unfinished grief. That's the fourth stressor. stressor. We make unwise, uninformed partnership commitment choices. Once our relationships start to develop stress after the romance sparkles and dust dies away, then some people at least look for help. The fifth of five reasons that we have such a high breakup rate is we have very few resources in person, in communities, on the media, in the web, that knows about these four prior stressors and can intelligently advise people how to learn about them, how to learn what they mean, and how to apply them so people make three right commitment choices. The high divorce rate in our country uh, indicates that people are making up to three wrong choices, unwise choices. They are. They choose the wrong person, meaning someone who's wounded and unaware, at the wrong time before the person has discovered their wounds and has started to heal them and reduce them and gain appropriate knowledge. The wrong time. For the wrong reasons, there's a host of wrong reasons to make a primary relationship choice uh, to try to be normal, to end the hassle of the dating scene, to gain a financial security, to gain someone to care for your child as a single parent. These are unwise reasons to make a primary life commitment choice. There are much healthier reasons. The balance between the healthy and the unhealthy in our country seems to be winning as judged by the fact that over half of American couples break up psychologically or legally. The point of this video and the point of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website is to alert you to these stressors and motivate you to look at them in the light of your own life and your own family and your own marriage in case you're committed Find out if you are a wounded, grown, wounded child, a grown, wounded child. Take the quizzes in the website to discover what it is you need to know that you don't know. Reduce your unawareness, replace it by awareness. See if you've got unfinished grief, and if you do, find out in lesson three how to thaw it and finish it. If you're about to make a primary relationship choice, make three wise choices. You'll find out how to do that in lesson four of this website and in the related videos on YouTube. I hope you find what I've just said provocative. Notice your reaction. If it's skeptical, if, it's in your, if you stay in your head, if you intellectualize it, if you say this is new and psychobabble, ba, poo, humbug, that's probably a sign you are controlled by a well-meaning false self. Yellow light. I hope you enjoy learning from this website and the related videos on YouTube. Thanks for watching this.